Okay, so the last video we were having issues of getting that data to work simultaneously with our slider. So again, this was our slider. So once it gets to 89, that should be the end of that first data sequence. And when it gets to 90, it should begin to show that next index item, which is now one. And the way we were able to kind of get around that was to remap these values, one of my favorite things to do. And we can start doing that by going to our series. Um, we want to start at zero, have one step values, and the, there are to be 900 to match that frame rate. That gives us our bounds. So we have zero to 899 values again showing it consecutively and then we want to remap those to match again our zero to nine index value so in order to achieve that we have to actually go to our negative because the gap between uh, zero to zero point five is only a value of 0.5 whereas that next increment is 0.51 to 1.5, which is a one uh, unit value. So we have to go back negative in order to compensate for that. Um, so by that, we were able to remap them. So now, even though they're in the negatives, so if I go to these lower numbers, a negative 0 0.49, that says that's a zero index. Again, when I'm at around that 89 and then make that leap, it goes into that next index item. So this should solve your issues for now. Again, this is large data sets, so having it off by a few frames shouldn't be too bad. If it's, again, 30 frames per second, this is going to be 1 300th of a second or pretty uh, short amount of time. So in the, in, a, in the entirety of the animation, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. The point is that we're in the ballpark. And in order to maybe add a little bit more to this, we can always add maybe a location as to where this is falling on our surface. So if we go back over here to where our points are, shows them here as well as up there we can always project those to a plane um, unfortunately in grasshopper you can't project points onto the surface and rhino your itself you can however that's not going to be helpful in this case so we can project these to a plane which will get us pretty close. So let's do the project. You'll see it looks like projected point on a collection of shapes. I don't know if this is one of my specials. Oh, maybe this will work. So points, direction, geometry. So in this case, we can. My apologies. So again, I'm going to take these points. And again, we're going to project points. So I'm going to take those points. Direction, again, is the negative direction. And then the geometry, that would be the surface. So we have to reference that surface. So let's go ahead and unlock that and select it. Reference the surface. Go ahead and hide it. Turn the preview off. Lock that again. So this now becomes our geometry. This will probably take a hot second. Okay, so it's there. And now from that, we can begin to show another set of geometry that represents that. Maybe we want these to be circles that are indicative of that rain value. So again, I'm going to turn these off. I'm going to go to curve. I'm going to do circle. Again, it's asking for a plane or a point and then the radius. So I drag that into there so you can start to see 
They are all being projected or created at those points, but we want the radius to match the rain value. If I start to just directly drag these values into there, these circles are going to become extremely large. I already think that them with the radius of one are pretty large. So again, we can remap these values as well. So again, I'm going to math, remap, so drag these values into there. Look at the source domain, so I'll use a min and a max. Now I can choose my own new size. So I'm going to want it to be somewhere between maybe 0.25 as the minimum width or the minimum radius, and then maybe 2 as the max. And let's see how this looks. That's not too bad. I guess they can range a little bit more, so. Doesn't seem to be doing it correctly. Maybe I should go ahead and flatten it. Did I plug something into the wrong part? Let's go ahead and flatten these values. That's probably what's screwing with it. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's why that is working. So we want to know this entire bound, so that did it. So I can go ahead and unflatten that as well as this one. Okay, so that's really the only thing we need to do is flatten those min and the max value. So we have one bound instead of a series of bounds for each one. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Um, again, we can always convert these into surfaces using the planar boundary curve. And because I'd rather see one without edges, I can convert that to a mesh. And that begins to look much better. And then again, we're going to probably want to give it the same color. So let's do custom preview. Use that same swatch color. So in this case, they aren't showing up that well. So we might want to actually, instead of project them, project them to that and then move them up a little. So let's go ahead and move them. I'm just going to default to one. That should help it a bit. There we go. That looks much better. So now we can clearly start to see where those points are in which they're falling on the Las Vegas Valley. We may even want to turn off the roads in this case, just so we can start seeing. There we go, that's looking much better. So now you can see how that's looking. So again, once you start to play around with how to visualize this, I'm going to leave this pretty much here. Let's turn that off, that was kind of annoying. So now I can go ahead and go back to start the 
animation. And all I have to do now is right click on this that's controlling everything. That's the movement, that's the data, that's the circles on the ground. I can go ahead and just click animate. And make sure that you change your file extension name to a PNG if you intend to use this in any movie making software. Um, oddly enough, it defaults it to a BMP file extension name. However, even though that's a file extension, they're still being generated as PNG files, even though they have a BMP extension. And that's going to cause you issues when bringing them into Adobe After Effects because it wants to, it's reading that they are PNG images, but they have a different extension, which creates an error. So make sure to set that to PNG. I'm going to set up a location where I want to create this. Um, again, definitely make a new folder and put this. So animation sequence oblique. Make sure that that's selected and it's showing up there. And again, frame count, that's going to be 900. And now you can go ahead and hit OK, and it'll start to move this. And you can start to see up on the top how long it's going to take. So let's go ahead and let that operate.